Sometimes accidents raids into someone's lives. It takes away precious lives from among us. We cannot predict what happens to whom, when. Raids are designed by divine force, it seems. Welcome once again to News Analysis. News Analysis, a weekly magazine on current affairs. To begin with the main points in a nutshell. 30 years of space travel flights comes to an end. Norway blasts near Prime Minister's office in Oslo. Phone hacking? UK Prime Minister says James Murdoch has questions to answer. Somali Islamists maintain aid ban and deny famine. NASA selects four universities for 2012 XHAB Innovation Challenge. US and Canada heatway worsens in eastern regions. And now the news in detail. 30 years of space shuttle flights come to an end. Space shuttle Atlantis touched down on the shuttle landing facilities runway 15 at 5.57 a.m. EDT on July 21st. After 200 orbits around Earth and a journey of 5,284,862 miles, the landing at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida brought to a close 30 years of space shuttle flights. Although we got to take the ride, said Commander Chris Ferguson on behalf of his crew, we sure hope that everybody who has ever worked on, or touched, or looked at, or envied or admired a space shuttle was able to take just a little part of the journey with us. The STS-135 crew consisted of Commander Chris Ferguson, Pilot Doug Hurley, Mission Specialist Sandra Magnus and Rex Walheim. I really want to thank the Space Shuttle team and the Space Shuttle program for just a tremendous effort today and throughout the entire history of the program. We gave them a tremendous challenge to fly and execute these missions and to finish strong and I can tell you today that the team accomplished every one of those objectives, said Associate Administrator for Space Operations Bill Gerson Mayer as he addressed the media at the post-landing news conference. I'd also like to thank the nation for allowing us to have these 30 years to go use the shuttle system. It's great to have Atlantis safely home after a tremendously successful mission and home to stay, said Bob Cabana, Kennedy Space Center Director, referencing Atlantis' retirement at Kennedy's visitor complex. I am unbelievably proud to be here representing the Space Shuttle program and thousands of people across the country who do the work, said Mike Moss, Space Shuttle Launch Integration Manager. Hearing the sonic booms as Atlantis came home for the last time really drove it home to the, me that this has been a heck of a program. The workers out here and across the country in the space shuttle program have dedicated their lives, their hearts and their souls to this program and I couldn't be more proud of them, said Mike Laneback, a space shuttle launch director at Kennedy. A welcome home ceremony for the astronauts will be held Friday, July 22 in Houston. The public is invited to attend the 4 p.m. CDT event at NASA's Hangar 990 at Ellington Field. Gates to Ellington Field will open at 3.30 p.m. The ceremony will broadcast live on NASA television. On the 13-day mission, the STS-135 crew delivered to the International Space Station more than 9,400 pounds of spare parts, spare equipment and other supplies in the Rafilo multi-purpose logistics module, including 2,677 pounds of food. These supplies will sustain space station operation for the next year. 
the 21 foot long 15 foot diameter Rafilo brought back nearly 5,700 pounds of unneeded materials from the station. Space Shuttle Atlantis bright white iconic frame illuminates the darkness as it touches down on the shuttle landing facility runway 15 at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida for the final time. Securing the Space Shuttle fleet's place in history, Atlantis marked the 26th nighttime landing of NASA's Space Shuttle program and the 78th landing at Kennedy. Main gear touchdown was at 5.57 a.m. EDT, followed by news gear touchdown at 5.57.20 a.m. and wheel stop at 5.57.54 a.m. On board are STS-135 Commander Chris Ferguson, Pilot Doug Hurley, and Mission Specialist Sandra Magnus and Rex Walheim. On the 37th shuttle mission to the International Space Station, STS-135 delivered more than 9,400 pounds of spare parts, equipment, and supplies in Rafilo Multipurpose Logistics Module that will sustain station's operations for the next year. STS-135 was the 33rd final flight for Atlantis, which has spent 307 days in space, orbited Earth 4,848 times, and traveled 125,935,769 miles. We have the most incredible workforce here. Our job now is to help them transition to other things, whether it's in the aerospace industry or whether it's in other things around this area. Norway blasts near Prime Minister's office in Oslo. A large explosion has hit near government headquarters in the Norwegian capital, Oslo. The blast is thought to have caused damage to the offices of Norwegian Prime Minister Jens Stoltenberg and a number of other official buildings. There are conflicting reports over whether Mr. Stoltenberg was injured. Initial reports said he was unharmed. At least eight people were injured in the city center explosion, local media reports. Television footage from the scene showed rubble and glass from shattered windows in the streets. Smoke was around some buildings. All roads into the city center have been closed, said NRK newspaper. Oystein M. Jaron, head of communications for Norwegian Red Cross, said his offices were closed to the blast. There was a massive explosion which could be heard over the capital, Oslo. Mr. M. Jaron said there were fires burning in the 17-story Prime Minister's building. Eyewitnesses old Tommy Peterson said he was standing at a bus stop around 100 meters away from the blast. I saw three or four injured people being carried out of the building a few minutes later, Mr. Peterson told AP. He said there was a cloud of smoke blowing from the lower floors. An anarchic journalist, Ingham Anderson, said the headquarters of a tabloid newspaper, VG, had also been damaged. I see that some windows of the VG building and the government headquarters have been broken. Some people covered with blood are lying in the street, Associated Press News Agency quoted him as saying. It's complete chaos here. The windows are blown out in all the buildings close by. <laughs> Phone hacking, UK Prime Minister says James Murdoch has questions to answer. David Cameron says James Murdoch clearly needs to answer questions from MPs after his evidence on phone hacking was challenged. Labour's Tom Watson wants a police probe after the evidence was disputed by two ex News of the World executives. The News International chairman had said he was not aware of the email suggesting hacking went wider than a wrong reporter to the firm's paper. But ex-News of the World editor Colin Myler and legal manager Tom Crone said they told him. Mr. Murdoch, 
appeared before MPs on the Commons Culture, Media and Sports Select Committee on Tuesday alongside his father Rupert Murdoch, chairman of the News International's parent company, News Corporation. In a statement later, Mr. Murdoch said, I stand by, by my testimony to the Select Committee. Following Thursday's statement by Mr. Myler and Mr. Cron, Committee Chairman John Whitingdale said Mr. Murdoch had agreed to write to the committee on various points he had been unable to address at the hearing. He said, I am sure the statement suggests there is conflict between what Colin Myler is saying and what he said. We will ask him to answer that as well. Speaking during the visit to Warwickshire, the Prime Minister said, Clearly James Murdoch has questions to answer in the Parliament, and I am sure he will do that. And clearly News International has got some big issues to deal with and a mess to clear up. That has to be done by the management of the company. Labour leader Ed Miliband said, People will want to look at the comments that were made and want to resolve the different versions of events that we have seen. So my third question, Mr. Speaker, is does the Prime Minister accept that his conflict of interest put the Metropolitan Police Commissioner in an impossible position? So three questions are about B Sky B, the warnings about Mr. Coulson that were consistently ignored, and about the Met Commissioner. These and many other questions will have to be answered by the Prime Minister over the coming months. He says that in hindsight, he says that in hindsight he made a mistake by hiring Mr. Coulson. He says that if Mr. Coulson lied to him, he would apologize. Mr. Speaker, that isn't good enough. Because people It's not about hindsight, Mr. Speaker. It's not about whether Mr. Coulson lied to him. It is about all the information and warnings that the Prime Minister ignored. He was warned and he preferred to ignore the warnings so that the country can have the leadership we need. Why, why doesn't he do more? Why doesn't he do more? then give a half apology and provide the full apology now for hiring Mr. Coulson and bringing him into the heart of Downing Street. Prime Minister. What I would say to the right honourable gentleman is stop hunting feeble conspiracy theories and stop rising to the level of events. Most of that was just a tissue of totally... I will try and answer every point, but it was... First of all, let me thank him for what he said about recalling Parliament. That is right. Let me thank him for what he said about Lord Leveson. I think he will do a good job. Let me thank him for what he said about the panel, which we sent the names to his office this morning. I have to say, on most of the other questions, I feel he wrote the questions before he heard my statement today. He asks, he asks about the issue of... He asked about the issue of B Sky B. The Cabinet Secretary has said there was no breach of the Ministerial Code. You heard, you heard the evidence of Rebecca Wade yesterday saying there was not one single uh, inappropriate conversation. And when it comes to setting out meetings with News Corporation, I have set out every single meeting since the last election. No, the Right Honourable Gentleman published a list this morning, but it does not go back to the last election. And indeed, when are we going to see the transparency from Tony Blair and from Gordon Brown? Mr. Murdoch, do you accept that ultimately you are responsible for this whole fiasco?